Welcome back. It's time for Up the Press. And we have Ezekiel Enya Etok standing by to join us for analysis. But first, let's look at the front pages of some of the headlines, the newspapers. And we're starting with the Punch newspaper. Well, the Punch leads with subsidy. Tinubu orders Shatima governors to work on salaries palliatives. You have the riders there. Start work, Tinubu tells Neck as 22 governors, marketers, back subsidy removal. Or your plan salary increase, Labour gives June 19 ultimatum on 200,000 Naira wage. So there you have the picture of President Tinubu there with the governors. Uh, th there was the meeting uh, with the governors forum yesterday and they took a, a very lovely looking picture there, as you can see on the front page of the Punch newspaper. And so on the masthead, you have National Assembly. Tinubu APC moved to appease anti-zoning members. Details of that is on page two. Poor debt reading state give governors jumbo exit package. Details of that on page 19. XSGF hands over Boko Haram detainees Magus case to Akume. That's page 14 is where you have details of that. NNPCL to cut fuel importation from August. That's page 20 is where you find that NNPCL to cut fuel importation from August. And customs uncover 25 duty evading, uh, evading factories in Lagos. Page 25 is where you have details of that and 427,962 Nigerians in diaspora get NIN. Details of that on page 23 as a much will be taken from the Punch newspaper. Okay, we'll move to The Guardian. The Guardian leads with uproar over NNPC's sleazy $25.9 billion oil swap. 13.9 trillion naira subsidy payment. That's on page six. Uh, still on subsidy removal, Tinubu meets oil marketers, directs neck on interventions. Uh, there's an advice from, the, from Khan to Tinubu, ensure your appointments reflect merit, diversity. Khan clerics advise Tinubu. Nigeria loses $2.7 billion to be, beans exportation, exportation ban, rather. And then we also have Ondo cabinet splits over Keredolu's incapacitation. Those will be the headlines from The Guardian we'll take this morning. All right, so Business Day is the next newspaper. We'll be looking at the front page of... It leads with gas-powered vehicles now cost-effective as fuel subsidy ends. All right, and then you have Naira redesign, inflation, forest shortage, crimp Nigerian's economy, according to World Bank, says prospects for poverty reduction in SSA remain bleak. Nigerian banks, dollar Canning under pressure as investment dwindle. Well, that's the much I'll be taking from Business Day. Okay. And um, from Business Day, we move to the final newspaper, which is The Nation. The Nation newspaper leads with court stops FCC, ICPC, DSS from arresting Yari. And then we have... Another one up there, Tinubu to governors, it's time for governance. And the writer is, President asks NEC to work on subsidy palliatives. Then also, 75 senators elect backing Akpabio, says Ndume, and uh, returnee students from uh, Sudan get conditions for admission. Uh, those will be all from the nation this morning. And it's time for our analysts to... Show himself. <laughs> Ezekiel Enya Ito, good morning to you. Good morning. Always a pleasure to be with you guys.
guys. Always a pleasure to have you join us. Well, let's start with the Guardian newspaper. Opera over NNPC's sleazy $25.9 billion oil swap, 13.9 trillion naira subsidy payment. What do we know about this? It's, it's, it's been trending for some time. A lot of things are coming up since the removal of subsidy. Nigerians are angry about how they've been defrauded over the years in the oil and gas sector. So a lot of things are coming up. Talk to us about this very headline. I'll tell you, before I dissipate my energy further, as I already have to a great extent, I'm an architect and I believe in foundation. We must understand foundationally what obtains, what works, what does not work. We run a democracy. What that means is that any important decision has to be within the three arms of government. It must be legislated first, and it must be carried out by the executive. And if there are any disputes or any issues or anybody that is not satisfied, you go to the judiciary as a citizen. So whatever it is that we say here is just opinion, except that is appreciated by the legislature if there isn't an enabling law and one is made, or if there is, except it is carried out by the executive, it just remains, you know, like winking in the dark. To that extent, with that as the foundation, for what we have seen, the big question is exactly what is in the mind of the boss of the chief executive or of the executive arm that we call the chief executive or Mr. President, exactly what is in his mind to do and what can we do about it? The, the, the level of fraud that has been unraveled, unveiled in NNPC with this question of oil swap is monumental. It is obvious. Monumental. But two things happen. One is that Mr. President is in the know and couldn't be bothered because it is not politically expedient for him to go after that. So he's going to be political about it. He's going to speak loud and say nothing. He's going to just let it slide and knowing that they, they can create a, a diversion, a distraction, and we just move on. Or he's going to say, no, you know, I had said this is my turn. It is either my turn to also do what others have done, sucking so come on, make an enter. Or it is my turn to fix Nigeria that I work for under Nadeko. It is my turn to address those things that people have run away from. It is my turn to show Nigerians that there's something called leadership. And I've come here, and like Esther in the Bible, he says, if I perish, I perish. If I don't get second term, so be it. Some don't even have a first term. Some don't even have one day in office. I've been able to enjoy one week and head into the next. Mm. So for me, I'm going to take those hard decisions. It is my turn to liberate Nigeria. It is my turn to meet the yearnings and expectations of Nigeria. It is my turn to be that leader that Nigerians have been looking for. Except that is his mindset. Bring out, I mean, how many times have we brought out evidences that are just, even the blind sees, even the deaf, they hear. How many times? And where did it end? Nowhere. Because whoever got in there, like our last president, with all due respect, this is my personal opinion, I think he just wanted to be president. I think he, he just wanted to be president. Call me Mr. President. And so long as he got that office, it was done. He had achieved his aim. So anytime he's like, I've done my best, I've done my best. And he's not lying because his best was to be president and he's president. So the question is, who are we having as the president? Because any other analysis I do here, I mean, what am I going to say about that, the, 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 the swap? The question is, 
Where is the contract? What was the contract? How was it being implemented? Why must everything be shrouded in mystery and secrecy in government? Freedom of Information Bill has become just another piece of paper because you can't get it. So the question is, with that man that has come and said, look, from hands in the back to hands in front, mm -hmm. not just in front, but open, let us have an open policy, a government that is our government. And I want to end on this note for, for now. There's something called Office of the Citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That office is higher than the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria because we, he came to us and begged us. He came to us and said, please, I want to be President. The campaign went around the whole country. He begged us to give him the mandate. We gave him the mandate to serve us. So he reports to us. He is not our boss. We are his boss. He's accountable to us. So that time has come when we must wake up and occupy the office of the citizen of the Federal Republic and hold Mr. President to account. He's not a prime, he's not a he's not a king, he's not a monarch. He is a chief executive that reports to a board. We are the board. We are the we are, we are, we are, we are, we are the board of directors that he must report to us. So we must not accept to have this thing where Mr. President is a man that we hold in awe. He is like a demigod. No. He's a man that we should be able to call the question and say, what, what are you doing? Why is this so? We must threaten him. Let me use that word. Because my mother used to say something. I end here. What that means that the child that has nothing to fear never amounts to anything. Mm. Mr. President has to fear us. Okay, um, well, <clears throat> still talking about fuel and, uh, and related issues, uh, NNPCL will cut import uh, of fuel from August. How will that tell on our economy? That's on Punch newspaper this morning and uh, on page 20. You see, when you talk of we'll cut import of oil, let me tell you foundationally how some of these things work. We have crude and that crude can only be refined before it comes out. Let me be very specific now, as either fuel, uh, diesel, or, or petrol, or kerosene, any of those things. We have crude. We have four refineries. We have modular refineries here and there. It is either we bring our crude, and we also have the Dangote refinery. I, I don't know. Um, the exact stage it is being commissioned, but I need to get some more information on timelines of production, you know, because, um, you know, factories sometimes uh, work on, you know, kind of um, incremental basis. They could start with this and then add this and add that. I don't know how it is now, whether he is up and running and has already started collecting crude, or that also has to be made clear. Um, Dangote's refinery is a private investment. But the crude is a national investment. So I am entitled to know how our crude is being de distributed, whether it's being given to Dangote. That is my mind to know and what comes out of it. Usually what we have is the direct sales, direct purchase agreement where we bring our crude, we sell it to people or we exchange it. You know, even that direct sales, direct purchase is shrouded again in, in the mystery and, um, you know, in secrecy. Because what I want to know is when I bring a certain barrels of oil, of crude, how much, you know, refined product do I get in exchange for a barrel? In one of the papers, you saw the derivatives and all the, 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 the net offs from a barrel of oil. You know, the, 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 I think one of the papers, I, I think it's um, um, Daily Trust, you know. But so the question is, when I get a barrel of crude, what do I do? Which one do I sell and collect cash? Which one do we do the JV where we do an exchange of some sort? What is really the, 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 the modus operandi of the working relationship between us and all these companies that uh, uh, offtake our crude? 
that again is not is not very clear so when nnpc says they will stop you know importation is it you know for now they have that exclusive right are they saying our exclusive right ceases to exist from august so that anybody can bring or are they saying we're no longer going to import because by august we have our modular refineries we have our local refineries we have the dangote refinery and all of them put together will give us what we want to see as the consumption volume of this country so we don't need to import anymore we need to put all those things on the table to understand what we are saying if not so we'll just be speaking loud and saying nothing so for me i want nnpcl to put all these things on the table are uh, what is the status of our refineries? When can they come on stream? How was the production capacity of, um, of, NN, of um, um, Dangote refinery? How much is it giving us and how much is it giving out? Which quantity is obligatory, mandatory, and which one is his discretion? He may, he may not. And then what all the modular refineries that have been licensed, is any of them working? Who is keeping tap of all of them? If any is working, how, what is the consumption, uh, the production capacity of each of them? Mm. We need to just have a place that you can click in the world of today and all the facts and figures appear and then we can take an informed decision. For now, they're just making statements that even me, as an enlightened person, I really can't make head, head or tail out of it. All right. <laughs> Okay, so let's uh, move on. I, I do remember we interviewed someone from NLC last year, last week, and one of the questions I asked was if NLC or you know label what TUC have been able to go inspect these refineries, Nigerian refineries, to find out what the state of things really are, you know, in the, the state of disrepair or repair, because we understand that some of them are being repaired. What is the level? of that and um, he did say they didn't have much information so i hope that as they continue with their negotiations with the government they would also take time to get all the necessary details about this let's move on to let me, sorry let me just butt in there a little bit okay you know you know i wanted to be governor yes well we are still on like i said and one of the things i did was very 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 elaborate and strategic engagement with labor you see, this body organization we call labor, we need to look at them very well. There is no government without labor. You cannot pass any memo that does not come from the system. I, no matter how close I am to a governor, I cannot generate a memo. There's a way government works. And the engine of government is labor. And when you talk of something like TUC, you see, TUC and let's say NLC generally, they go beyond government. They go into National Union of Road Transport Workers. They go into uh, this NNPC and the rest. They go into the banks. They go into... So wherever information is supposed to generate, please, all the NNPC workers, who are they? Are they not members of labor? How can labor tell me they don't know? What do you mean by you don't know? You don't know because you don't want to know. You see, I'm a labor person. Luckily, my cap is here. It's always very close to me. Mm. You understand me? So, I'm a labor friend. Very, very labor, whatever. But we have come to we have to come to a point where we call a spade a spade. Labor has to go beyond negotiating for their members and give this country the facts and figures that they know. This issue of maybe um, secrecy of government and the um, oath of secrecy they take. I don't know where it is. I don't know how that reconciles with the Freedom of Information Bill and all those things. But I want to say that labor is one person. There are three people that are problems in Nigeria as far as I'm concerned. Number one is the bank. Nothing happens without the bankers. And the bankers, if they are not patriotic, they will kill this country. Number two is um, civil service, the civil servants. Labor, NLC, TUC, they are number two. No politician does anything without getting a memo generated by them and from them. Yeah. And number three is a politician. The politician cannot act without labor, and labor cannot work well financially without the banks. These three people have to come to take an oath of allegiance to this country. 
whether they want to save us <laughs> or they want us to be destroyed. All right, so let's move on. Subsidy. Tinubu orders Shatima governors to work on salaries, palliatives. Well, the riders there, I'll take one of the riders, Oyo plans salary increase. Labor gives June 19 ultimatum on 200,000 Naira uh, wage. You know, he, you know, this, so this is the actually infuriate. Is Labor telling me they don't know the reality of Nigeria today? The 30,000 Naira minimum wage, has it been paid? If it has not been paid, why has it not been paid? That is question number one. Number two, how many states can pay 200 or 300? Can Labour just come out and give us a kind of a dialogue? I want to see, you know, you know, I, I, I belong to a civil society uh, group, you know, and yesterday we had a very long meeting, and one of the things I told them was that convene a national dialogue, call labor, and say, labor, we want to support your 200,000, but we want to be able to put pressure on Nigeria. Please give us how you arrive at it and how it will be paid, because there's something you know that Nigerians don't know. Because, because before you can say 200,000 minimum wage, you've done your calculations and your analysis. And they are saying there's no money, there's no money. Definitely you know where there is money and where the leakage is. Come and carry us along and let us go with you because we want to get... In fact, if you can even make it 250,000 naira, we will be there with you. But if you are just throwing figures so that you can just go and bargain, then you are being very silly. You can't do that. Do you understand me? So we call labor. We call NNPC. We call your private, the organized private sector. We call the independent marketers. We call even the, the professors to come and do strategic analysis. We call former ministers. There was something that Mr. Don Hetiebet, who was a former minister of petroleum, said some time back. We call them a, a national dialogue, even if it takes a day or two, so that at the end of the day, all the, 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 the that government has been covering is opened up. Nigerians see everything. At that point, government tows what I call lines of least resistance. So long as you don't know, they will cover the wool. The day you open, they'll say, oh, as if they didn't know. You understand me? Why is the current government saying, oh, we didn't see this, we didn't see that? No, you were the ones that ran government for the past eight years. You saw it, you knew it. So let Nigerians, let the civil society, I'm not about protests hitting the street, no. You see, there's something that John Stott said, and I like it. He said, knowledge without zeal is the paralysis of all action, but zeal without knowledge is fanaticism in action. So I am in for knowledge, for understanding. Bring it. There's a way you bring facts, and even the workers will say, ah, this money is not there. You understand me? And there's a way you bring facts. Open and Nigerians say, Haba, pay him more now, bros. You know, so we want to act on informed knowledge. Let's leave this politics where nobody knows everything. Just, I end on this very, very briefly. If I carry 100 blocks and I scatter them, 100 blocks, you count one, two, three, four, five, six. They say, No, you've counted that one before. You start again. Say, no, no, you've counted that one before. One hour, two hours, we are trying to count 100 blocks. But if we carry those 100 blocks and stack them in tens, stack them well, and we just see the tens, we now put them two, 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 you, within five seconds, you count the one, two, three, four, five, seven, seven, ten, ten times ten, 100. Do you get the point? So pe these people don't like things that are organized because we'll get the, 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 the answer. They just want everything scattered. We are talking this, we are saying that, we are not knowing, we don't, we don't even know where we are going. That time, mine is enough, is enough. Let us stand to run governance in a way that is organized, that is transparent, that is, you know, target driven. And then we'll have a country that works. If not, so every day we'll just be coming here, running an analysis, commentary. They will just throw something like a file. We all run there and then blah, 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 blah. Then they now come and throw in another direction. We run there and then eight years will pass. Eight years have just passed after 16 years of PDP. Where are we? I think enough has got to be enough. Mm. Uh, let's just take this very briefly because our time is up. Um, 
what are your thoughts on what is happening in Ondo State? There's been this talk about the fact that the governor is not well enough to continue his duties. At some point, even, there were rumors that he had died. But, well, luckily, we know that he has not died. But everybody is saying, or a lot of people are saying, that he is not able to um, take on his duties as a governor anymore. Yet, he's clinging to power, and we've not heard anything about handing over to the deputy or giving him a chance to uh, fill in the shoes while he takes care of his health or something. So, Ondo cabinet right now is split over Keredolu's incapacitation. That's a story in the Guardian newspaper. Your thoughts, please, briefly. We cannot forget too soon, Madam Akuili. She came on to Federal Executive Council meeting and said, gentlemen, ladies, our principal is not exactly in a place he can continue. Let us, in the larger interest of this country, do the needful. That gave rise to what they call the doctrine of necessity that brought in our former president, um, good yeah. luck, Jonathan. I think that on those state people should think of the generality of the people of that state, far and above clinging to power at the expense of the people. Let the governor transmit power to the deputy and get proper medical checkup in his own better interest if he cares about the people. But if it's about him and nothing more, then it's unfortunate. But let me end by saying that, um, you know, the 10th National Assembly, which was the topic you wanted to end with, um, I believe that um, we should be careful how we decide who we want to be there as the chairman of that National Assembly. We should look at somebody that if you go back to what he has done, you can see that he's somebody that is target driven, somebody that has a big dream mentality, somebody that we can say all he's done has been uncommon and we have put him in that mode of being Mr. Uncommon. I believe that Nigeria needs somebody with a big dream, with an ambition right now. Please don't mention the name of your candidate. <laughs> Please don't mention the name of your candidate. Or you can bring the advert. We see adverts running. He's running adverts on some television stations. He hasn't brought here. I'm not called the name. I'm just describing. Yeah, yeah but, but I know your candidate. Pro problem is that all the people I know who your are candidate. the front runner, the front runners, <laughs> all of them have baggages. Whether they are common or common, all of them have baggages with the EFCC with the, with the law and all that, and I don't know where Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigerians will choose from, because if you are taking a Senate president or a Speaker of the House of Assembly and he already has cases of corruption, we don't know how uh, that is going to play out uh, for the good of Nigerians. So I think we take crossed. that into consideration when we are electing. Right now, we've crossed that bridge already. We've got to choose from what we have. You know, it's like election. Once you're on the ballot, then you can be chosen. If you're not on the ballot, you cannot be. Right now, that, that's the... There are still other candidates that don't have these baggages anyway. But we're not hearing about them. Right now, we have another one that EFCC, DSS, everybody has been told not to arrest because he is a very big front runner and uh, trying to become the Senate president. And whether, and whether, whether he's supposed to be arrested or not... They, there's been a, an injunction that he must not be arrested. So uh, the law is cuddling the mm. law for, in the interest of somebody. So it's, are some people bigger than the law that at some point they will say, do not arrest him. There's a prospective... Perpetual uh, injunction restraining. What a terrible thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Ezekiel and Ntok, for your time and insight as always. Thank you. I appreciate it. God bless you both. Bless you. bless you too. Well, you are still watching The Breakfast. It's time for us to take a little break and come back with our very first hot topic. Stay with us.